Today, we launched Deep Research, our next agent. This is like a superpower, experts on demand. It can go use the internet, do complex research and reasoning, and give you back a report. It is really good and can do tasks that would take hours or days and cost hundreds of dollars in the process. Let's get into their official announcement on their website, and then I'm going to show you some use cases, some prompts that I've given it already. It says introducing deep research in an agent that uses reasoning to synthesize large amounts of online information and complete multi-step research tasks for you. Today it's available for pro users. It will also roll out to Plus and Team Next. So if you have the $20 per month membership of ChatGBT, you will eventually get access to deep research, but you don't have it yet. Here we see the example, compile a research report on how the retail industry has changed in the last nine years. It will then ask you some clarifying questions. You reply, and as long as it's in the deep research mode, then it will go to the internet, scan, analyze, synthesize potentially hundreds of sources, and then bring you back a report. It also keeps track of the activity, and we'll get into that in a second with the examples that I have done. The ability to synthesize knowledge is a prerequisite for creating new knowledge. For this reason, deep research marks a significant step toward our broader goal of developing AGI, which we have long envisioned as capable of producing novel scientific research. Why we built deep research, we responded to deep seeks R1. Kidding, kidding, but it does look similar. The button looks very, very similar, and they called it deep research. Maybe on purpose, maybe a coincidence. Only time will be able to tell. Deep research is built for people who do intensive knowledge work in areas like finance, science, policy, and engineering, and need thorough, precise, and reliable research. It can be equally useful for discerning shoppers looking for hyper-personalized recommendations on purchases that typically require careful research like cars, appliances, and furniture. Every output is fully documented with clear citations and a summary of its thinking, making it easy to reference and verify the information. It is particularly effective at finding niche, non-intuitive information that would require browsing numerous websites. Deep research frees up valuable time by allowing you to offload and expedite complex, time-intensive web research with just one query. How to use deep research. In ChatGBT, select deep research in the message composer and enter your query. Tell ChatGBT what you need, whether it's a competitive analysis on streaming platforms or a personalized report on the best commuter bike. You can attach files or spreadsheets to add context to your question. Once it starts running, a sidebar appears with a summary of the steps taken. Deep research may take anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes to complete its work, taking the time needed to dive deep into the web. In the meantime, you can step away or work on other tasks. You'll get a notification once the research is complete. The final output arrives as a report within the chat. In the next few weeks, we will also be adding embedded images, data data visit data visualizations, and other analytic outputs. At GBT 4.0, you would say, help me find iOS and Android adoption rates, uh, the percentage who want to learn another language and change in mobile penetration, all of these things. Deep research, you would do this, help me find iOS, da da da, da. And then basically, the output is different. So it gives you the countries on this side, a couple of bullet points, recommendations, and it's pretty short. This one is a whole analysis. So it gives you top 10 developed economies by GDP. It can organize it into tables if it so needs. And as you can see, it's just different. The sources, recommendations, the summary. Okay, so... If you're looking for something more on the right, that's when you would click deep research in the chat GBT bar. Needle in a haystack. There is a TV show that I watched whenever and I need help finding the TV show. As you can see, here's the difference in output. And you could go to this website, just openai.com and check out the differences here. If we scroll down, how it works. Deep research was trained using end-to-end -end reinforcement learning on hard browsing and reasoning tasks across a range of domains. 
Through that training, it learned to plan and execute a multi-step trajectory to find the data it needs, backtracking and reacting to real-time information. The model is also able to browse over user uploaded files, pilot and iterate on graphs using the Python tool, embed both generated graphs and images from websites in its responses, and cite specific sentences or passages from its sources. As a result of this training, it reaches new highs on a number of public evaluations focused on real world problems. Humanity's last exam. On Humanity's last exam, a recently released evaluation that tests AI across a broad range of subjects on expert level questions, the model powering deep research scores a new high at 26.6% accuracy. This test consists of over 3,000 multiple choice and short answer questions across more than 100 subjects, from linguistics to rocket science, classics to ecology. Compared to OpenAI 01, the largest gains appeared in chemistry, humanities, and social sciences, and mathematics. The model powering deep research showcased a human-like approach by effectively seeking out specialized information when necessary. And as you can see here, it has the models and the accuracy numbers. And OpenAI Deep Research has the highest score so far at 26.6. O3 Mini 10.5. O3 Mini High is 13. DeepSeek R1 is 9.4. OpenAI O1 is 9.1. Grok 2 is 3.8. Claude 3.5, Sonnet is 4.3. And they have more things on the website. Expert level tasks. In an internal evaluation of expert level tasks across a range of areas, when you go to your ChatGBT, if you have the pro membership on ChatGBT or the pro tier, you will automatically see the little deep research button. So it'll say search and then it'll say deep research. You have to actually click the deep research button and it'll turn blue. And this is where you would prompt deep research to start doing something for you and to go out and find the sources. So for example, let's actually do the car query so you could see how it can work while we're doing other things and how it notifies you when it's done. So I'm going to say do research on the best SUV that can easily fit three growing kids and three adults. With the most modern technology, we go on many road trips. Could you clarify a few things? Budget. So do you have a price range in mind? Luxury, mid-range, or budget-friendly? Are you looking for a brand new model or open to pre-certified or pre-owned? Do you have any preferred automakers? Would you prefer captain's chairs in the second row, which reduces seating to six? Are you open to hybrid? Then you would answer the questions and it's going to say, okay, let me go do that research for you. I'll let you know once the best options are ready. Now, in the meantime, what we're going to do is look at some of the other ones that I've done. And as you can see here, it's working. So it'll notify you that it's working on this. So I put analyze how live video impacts small business sales, provide data, case studies, and actionable insights, include bullet points, charts, and graphics. Now, as it said on the website right now, the graphics part is a little bit limited, but we'll get there. It said before diving in, could you specify? It asks me these questions. Do you want case studies from particular platforms and what time range should the data cover? It did its thing, and then it said, got it, or great. I'll research how live video does this. As you can see here, research was completed in 15 minutes, and it reviewed 23 different sources. If you click this, you could actually see the activity. You could also see a list of the 23 different sources here, and then you could click on each of those sources and Go check them out yourself if you would like. It will then give a report. So it says how live video impacts sales for service-based business 2024 and beyond. It does the little introduction, LinkedIn live video, B2B engagement and authority, higher engagement. There's a case study, sales and lead impact. Video content on LinkedIn can boost conversion rates. 
strategies on LinkedIn focus on educational live videos. For example, a marketing agency might run a live tutorial on five SEO tips and between 20 and 30 minutes, promote your LinkedIn live in advance, and repurposing the recording as a featured post or blog. This is all true. Obviously, it doesn't show or explain how to do this, but it's pretty on point. And remember, it could also pull from sources that I upload. So if I wanted it to include specific case studies, maybe for myself or clients, I could also upload those case studies. Data-driven insights, higher engagement versus static content, conversion and sales uplift, platform algorithms favor live, the bottom line, key strategies. And it did all of this in 15 minutes. Now, the one thing is that obviously, yes, it's organized, but it's not optimized for readability per se. That could be improved a little bit, but it does have the sources here. It will even quote some of the sources and then it'll lead you to that source. And then it'll have the sources at the bottom. Once it gets the visuals, I mean, that's going to be pretty impressive. Share what you think in the comments. The next one is you could ask it for recollection. The one example that I did was I used to watch this show where this mad scientist lost his son. The kid was around 10. He was doing everything he could to jump back in time to get his son back. Sometimes they even wore black tuxedos. Can you find the name of the show? It immediately did that. It says, sounds like you're describing the TV show Fringe. This series follows the scientist Dr. Walter Bishop who lost his son Peter and later worked with the FBI on bizarre cases. And then it didn't really need to go into deep research. So if it finds an answer for you, it'll stop itself. So just because you click deep research doesn't mean that it's going to go just for 15 minutes and find every single thing that it can for you, which I also thought was pretty interesting. On the OpenAI website, there is a medical example. So I gave it a medical example. And I said, can you compile the best data for pediatric cancer survivors? Because I am a pediatric cancer survivor related to overall health or lifestyle recommendations in their adulthood. Make a point to use bullet points, at least one table in at least one chart. I did this because it wasn't really giving me tables or charts when I was asking. I understand there is that limitation for the visuals. I really wasn't even getting tables. So if you want a table, make sure that you say, make it a point to use the bullet points and at least one table. Then it asked me these questions. I answered them and it said, great. It took five minutes. It reviewed 15 sources. I'm surprised that it didn't review more sources and take more time. Uh, maybe if I asked it for a more specific correlation instead of just like overall health, then maybe it would have done that. But it gave me the key findings. And for each of those key findings, again, there's a resource. I also think it's interesting that when it asked me the questions, it says, should I prioritize information from medical institutions, survivor advocacy groups, or research studies? It does the key findings, the common long-term effects versus recommended style modifications. And this is where it included the table. And even inside the table, it had like titles and sources, visualizing survivor health outcomes, lifestyle recommendations, and then let's see the best SUV for family. It took eight minutes and it reviewed five sources. Kia Telluride, I have no idea what that car is, but it gives all the reason. Hyundai Palisade, Toyota Highlander Hybrid, as well as the Toyota Grand Highlander and the Honda Pilot. So then you could take this, maybe make a better decision with it. But this is kind of the overall gist of deep research. This is basically a research analyst at your fingertips for different things that you could do and prompt for yourself, for your own business, but also for your client's businesses and maybe a client's specific businesses, like a market analysis for a specific client, reviewing a strategy that you want to implement for a specific client, and maybe putting it up against a second strategy that's been proposed. Let's see how useful it really is because it's one thing to have that report, but making it readable and understandable and then implementing that report is a totally different story.